These were my dog tags right here. You would have uh, two of those on, 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 a, on your neck. And if you got killed, you would leave one with the body and one you'd take off. But these are the ones I got here. I, I prefer to be called Gene, but uh, Leo Kleindl, K-L-E-I-N-D-L, that's a German name. Klein means small. I grew up uh, in uh, <clears throat> Browns Valley, South Dakota. It's a long ways away from here. Do you remember where you were when you first heard about Pearl Harbor? Yeah. Uh, we, I was with uh, a couple of other guys. We were bowling at the State and Madison bowling alley in in Rockford when the news came out. We were, we were kind of excited to hear that. We didn't expect anything like that, of course. And it looked like uh, <clears throat> we're, we're going to see some ac activity <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Well, my brother Cliff got drafted. Uh, his, 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 and for some reason or other, I thought maybe we should, I should, and he be, be together. So I enlisted at that time. I was thinking about the infantry, which was the dumbest thing you could think about. That's where the action is. <laughs> That's where people get killed. At the moment, so I came to my sanity in my small knowledge of what was happening. I, 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 I chose the quartermaster. That's the farthest you can be back to bring up the supplies and so forth. Later on, I became a dental technician and, 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 a, and a first aid, aid man besides that, like that picture. We had our own medical pouch and so on. Uh, we didn't realize how dangerous it was to cross that ocean <laughs> with all them submarines and the Germans' head and so on. We ended up in Liverpool, England, and uh, did a, we there? We were there for quite a while before the invasion. Were you? You were D-Day plus two on Utah Beach. Yeah. Did, were you out in the channel for those two days or were you back in England? Uh, we were out in, in, the, in the channel. Uh, some some uh, time was spent in, in the ship, setting off the heart, setting off the uh, uh, English. Uh, my brother Cliff was there and he was on the top deck which was a good place I, I was way down below right right along water level level right in the middle of the ship the torpedo hit in that area <laughs> that was a bad spot to be in <laughs> this was it was down below cliff later my brother was up on the top floor so that was good news you see all the other ships in the in the channel. What was that? Yeah, there were there were a lot of them. You, know, you could you they were spaced a certain distance apart. You, you could see them. Yeah, you just more or less went along with whatever was told you were told to do, and had no idea what was happening actually. What they had on the beach at the area. They had some balloons hanging out in the sky, long uh, strings and a big balloon. So if the planes came too low, if they wanted to dive bomb, they might end up tangling in, in those in those lines. So I didn't see any planes to do that, but they, they were prepared for for that event if it, it was going to happen. We landed and I think we walked, to, I forget quite a ways before we made contact. We were in the woods. Uh, there are people in charge that's supposed to know what's going on. And we're just 
tagging along, <laughs> following orders, whatever. So somebody hollers out, some sergeant. But I remember right, they had one pathway that had been checked for, for whatever the Germans would plant. So we would walk, stay on that path to where we were going. I don't know. I don't know whether, whether we were scared or not. Uh, I don't think we knew enough to be scared, really, what was, what was happening. We were available to help where we could help with all that stuff that was going on. Most of the things that happened, we weren't aware of what was going to happen, so uh, we did what uh, Dig a fox hole if we needed one, or usually a slit trench. What's a slit trench? It would be, you'd dig it just so that you could get below the ground, and you'd lay down in that thing. Sometimes they had mortars. They dropped a, dropped the mortars in. They, the, the, the shrapnel would break up into all little pieces, and then shh, like that. So we were kind of below that try to stay below the in the in the hole get get that body down safely as far as you could as far as you could <laughs> and hope for the best <laughs> well we had little shovels or and also little pickaxe axes but one of the other I had, I had a shovel <clears throat> it wouldn't take too long maybe 15 minutes or so we could we could, we could dig pretty fast when you had to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, when the heads rose, you could you couldn't get through them. Uh, sometimes they'd take a vehicle and try to get way back and just just try to boom through, uh, which I guess became success, success, successful, but at first you couldn't get through them. They were, they were thick. You could hear voices on the other side. Uh, they were vo uh, voices of German, Sprechen Sie Deutsch, speaking German. <laughs> uh, at nighttime, it was kind of scary. A lot of sounds, you could hear a lot of noises and stuff. <laughs> but uh, it, you, it's amazing how quickly you adjust to the situation. Uh, you just follow suit what everybody else is doing. Lots of time the artillery would come flying in there. But you thought you were reasonably safe, which with all that cover, I had a, actually a pistol I carried, but th we were told if we got captured, that would be a you'd be in big trouble. <laughs> as a medic, you weren't you weren't spent, as expected to be carrying any any kind of a weapon. But I did carry a pistol there for quite a while. We had one guy that had got separated from his unit. He was all by himself. And for a long time, he was in hiding, trying to figure out, is it safe to surrender and who to surrender to? <laughs> and when they discovered a bunch of medics were there, that was their best bet. They came out, pushed them, came about seven of them came out from behind buildings and surrendered to, to the medics rather than anybody else. Do you remember the town where you received your Purple Heart and how oh, yeah. was hit by a sniper or something? Uh, no, I think I, I think it was uh, from artillery coming in. <laughs> it was not 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 a serious thing, but you see, at that time, uh, the American Army had trying to keep track of, of points. I don't know what that was all about. If you got wounded, you wanted to make it slightly 
so slightly wounded. That's what, what happened in my case. <laughs> my brother was wounded twice. Brother Cliff, I had to worry about him a lot. <clears throat> He was in Harmony also. Yeah, he, yeah, he was in, in, the, in actually C Company, and I was in the medical detachment of the 358th. They had three regiments, 357, 358, 359. And each regiment had A, B, C, D, E, F, all, all, had all those different companies in them. So the 358th was the, the regiment. And my brother Cliff was in C Company. Like I said, he was wounded twice, sent back to England. And each time I was glad that uh, he was out of the, out of the action. Uh, one time he got hit in the back by, um, by a shell. And my buddy, Alex, happened to be walking by. He was laying there, he thought he was dead, but he wasn't. He got sent back to England. So that was, then I felt pretty good about that, the fact that he was out of, out of it for a while. Yeah. Later on, he was fortunate to get a 30-day leave, sent back to the USA, and I thought, oh, that's great. So he was back home there for quite a while. Then, he, then they sent him back, and he used to shake hands real soft-like, you know. I didn't feel like he was glad to see me. I said, I met him in the woods. He came back. I said, squeeze my fan. <laughs> and I was glad to see me. <laughs> June 19th. <clears throat> This is a 14 mile march without a break. Took place at night time. But finally we stopped so quickly. Alex and I laid down on the ground and fell asleep. We were too tired to even dig slit trenches. There was the, the farmer we were at, I was the farmer with two daughters. Of course, us guys were interested in those two daughters. <laughs> Every once in a while, we'd, we'd see them, the two of them would walk out to one of the buildings. And they didn't have indoor toilets at that time. So everybody thought, well, that's where they're going to go, go out there and relieve themselves. <laughs> it's, in, in, in wartime, uh, your mind kind of changes into a different mood. You, as a civilian, you 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 think differently. Uh, life is different when you're thinking that way. But uh, it's a it's it's a mood that you get a mood you get into that that, that uh, here you are. And of course, life is cheap and and. Uh, do the best you can to keep from, from getting killed if necessary. <laughs> you have to dig, dig fast. 